This season, Instacart has your back-to-school. As in, they've got your back-to-school lunch favorites, like snack packs and fresh fruit. And they've got your back-to-school supplies, like backpacks, binders, and pencils. And they've got your back when your kid casually tells you they have a huge school project due tomorrow. Let's face it, we were all that kid. So first call your parents to say I'm sorry, and then download the Instacart app to get delivery in as fast as 30 minutes all school year long. Get a $0 delivery fee for your first three orders while supplies last. Minimum $10 per order. Additional terms apply. Okay, it's time to commit. 2024 is the year for prioritizing yourself. Begin your new smile journey with Byte, and you could start seeing results in just two to three weeks. Just order your at-home impression kit today for only $14.95 at Byte.com. Byte Clear Aligners are doctor-directed and delivered to your door. Treatment costs thousands less than braces. Plus, they offer financing options, accept eligible insurance, and you can pay with your HSA, FSA. Get 80% off your impression kit when you use code WONDERY at Byte.com. That's B-Y-T-E dot com. Start your confidence journey today with Byte. Explore the history of Wish TV, one of Indiana's longest-running television stations. We'll take a deep dive and interview the people who have helped bring some of the most important stories to Indiana since 1954. This is Our Story. Our wish story, local then, now, and always, Wish TV. Hello, my name is Chris Wakefield, and welcome to Wish Story. Just a few months after making its debut in 1954, Wish TV hired a singer to join its talented ranks. Known for her beautiful singing voice and acting ability, station management asked her to present the weather. And for 13 years, Kay Field delighted Central Indiana viewers with her warm smile calm tone, and unique ability to write backwards on a weather map. Inducted into the Indiana Broadcast Pioneers Hall of Fame in 2007, she is widely known as one of the first weather girls in central Indiana television. But the person I'm sitting across from right now simply called her Mom. Kit Kruger, <laughs> welcome to History. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. It's well, you, fun to be here. Hey, you called her Mumsy. Mumsy, yes, from the old Dobie Gillis show where uh, we heard that title referred to from someone's mother. And my sister and I thought it was hysterical. So we started calling her Momsy. She embraced it. And she liked it. She did. Wow. Yeah. Do you know how your mom eventually came to... Let's, talk, let's back up a little bit okay. and talk about <clears throat> WFBM, Channel yes. 6. She Mother one day, very bodacious, very, she called Channel 6 and she said, could you use a singer? And they said, uh, well, Sure. So they hired her as a, a singer, and um, I believe this is the place where she uh, sang and Kenny Jagger played, and it was called Harmony Hotel. And that was probably 52, 53 maybe, maybe even sooner than that. Did she just sing standards or? If, well, she had been a big band singer, so she probably, a, a lot of those, yeah, she had quite a repertoire. In the early to mid-50s, she's traveling all over Indianapolis, playing at the Roof Ballroom, playing at You're the Moreau right. Hotel. You you have done your homework, Chris. <laughs> yeah, she sang with Billy Moore Orchestra, Billy Moore's Orchestra at um, at the Marat Hotel. And you're right. She 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 got around doing And was she just singing, again, just big band stuff and standards? Mostly, and... I think so, because it was close enough to the big band era. She may have sung more that were... Um, you know, some that were more current at that time. Now, I've only heard her talking voice, her presenter voice with the weather. I've never heard her sing. Uh -huh. Describe her singing voice to me. Oh, it's beautiful, beautiful and mellow. And um, gosh, I'm not sure what else to say, but it's it's lovely. And, you know, in the old footage that I've seen from her on the weather, in fact, she saw some of it because maybe 15, 20 years ago, uh, Channel 8 did a retrospective of, of old shows and and old stars that were on the the channel, and you her voice sounded more like a chipmunk. It was a wobbly film or something, and so that didn't represent her at all because she had a lovely voice. So. It's, I, I came across some um, footage of her a few weeks ago, and I put it on my Instagram. Did you? This is how we ended up connecting. Oh, that's but right. It's very yeah. wobbly. It's very that kind right. Of it doesn't sound like her at all. But from the like what I've heard, when it mm -hmm. was normal, 
It's very, I used the word calming. It's very calming. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think it was very mellow. I, yeah, she, she was a gem and she would sing songs around the house. Um, and I have a vast storehouse of big band songs in my head and I didn't even realize I was absorbing them. But that was fun. Was she uh, like Sunday morning, put the record player on and just... She would just sing without any accompaniment. Yeah, just sing. Or we'd have the radio on and listen to current stars of the of the time. Perry Como, Patti Page, McGuire Sisters, um, uh, Frank Sinatra, whatever. Who Tony was her Bennett. favorite? I don't know. I think she probably liked Frank Sinatra a lot, I'm okay. guessing. Lots of women did back yeah, in those days. Yeah. So she goes from Channel 6 to mm-hmm. not 8, but... W-I-R-E radio. You're right. I'd forgotten about that and part. And she's in this birthday club? That, you know, I forgot. You know more than I do. I'd forgotten about that part. Yeah, I guess she did. It was called Surprise Party. Surprise Party. Spri- exactly. Say it, say it, it, it kind of, you're right. Surprise. Surprise. Uh-huh. What was that about? I, you know, I can't remember that much about it. I really can't. I wish I could. From what I can tell, I don't know if they would show up to a spot or the kids would come to the station and they would sing songs. And... I don't. You know, it was an interesting. I think, as I said, you probably know more about that than I, I do remember the name of the show. But I was pretty little. I was really little. So don't remember that much. And that's 1430 a.m. for those listening today. It's yes. uh, WXNT now. It's a oh, okay. news talk station. But she was okay. there. Uh, Monday through Friday from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Oh, um, I love it. And it was it. this birthday club called Surprise Party. Yeah, yeah. Then she comes to Wish TV. Mm-hmm. Um, did she tell you how that started? Yes, there was um, uh, a weather girl. The first weather girl they had was uh, Phyllis Klein, and she uh, was pregnant and wanted to have her child and, and left um, after a month or so. She went on there very long. So they interviewed a number of gals in town, and Mother said, well, I'll try that. So, um, I mean, she wasn't a meteorologist, but back then that didn't didn't matter. But I think she did a great job of what she did. And um, anyway, they interviewed a number of them. They called her. They said, we want you to do this. And she said, oh, great. Well, how did you hone in on me? And and they said, well, we, we found out you had been a Girl Scout leader, and we thought you had a wholesome image. <laughs> so, which you had to have in the, in the that, yeah, 1954 yeah and that's interesting because you're exposing that with a pregnant phyllis klein uh-huh which back uh, in the day you know if you if you were going to have a baby they basically wouldn't let you on tv or they'd film you or photograph you from them that's how they did lucy right when lucy was pregnant uh, probably so because she they yeah. you couldn't say pregnant she was with child i know or she is was that, expecting. Isn't that something? But the word pregnant was exactly. a step too far. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Talk to me about what you know from your mother, her early days of television on Wish TV 8 from 54 and this writing backwards on a map. Right. Um, well, I, the, the, the initial weather board she had was glass. So she would stand behind it and she would write the numbers or any other information backwards. And um, she actually did that. And I also remember her... Um, this were in the old days in the, in the Riddick building. And I also remember that she had a little, um, Stife a brand, a German, uh, stuffed animal, um, a name pup, uh, just named Tiger. That was what it was. And a little, little hand puppet. And she would nestle it in the crook of her arm and she would just gesture. I, I don't know if she talked for it. I, I think she would just, it wouldn't talk. It would just look cute. And if the forecast was for rain, she'd put a little raincoat on it. <laughs> uh, this was during the weather. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Maybe it was right before or right after. And she said that that folksy years later, she said, I suppose that folksy kind of touch would not go over so much now. But I thought I liked it. Well, it worked for Mr. Rogers. And his, That's true. He had the tiger, right? It did. Yeah. yeah. Which is now a whole, like a whole cartoon. Daniel Tiger is a whole spinoff of Mr. Rogers' little pet tiger. Sure. I didn't even realize that. It is. Yeah. Um, huh. Did you ever see any footage of your mother? Of course, you did in person, but in uh-huh. color on television? She, they moved over into this building in 65. Yes. And I'm trying to think of when color, I'm thinking of some of the old Andy Griffith shows and they were, they were in color in what, 64 or five. I don't know what network that was on. It might've been CBS. Well, yes. Or, or Channel in, 8 in or 1954, whatever. In <clears> 1954, <throat> when the station first comes to fruition, we had color cameras. We just weren't using them yet. Okay. Color TV was still very new, but. I think she was in those last few years. I'll bet she was. Because all the footage I've seen of her is in black it's and white. It's in black and white. Which helps yeah. with the nostalgic feel of it. Sure. Uh, our first color program was September 25th of 54. 
So oh, right about really? when she would have started here, but it was a national program from CBS. Oh, okay. Uh, my favorite husband was a television. Oh, show. right, the one with Lucy. Yes. I love Lucy. Yeah. Yes. So that and was, Richard Denny. That think. was the first color program, but I don't know locally when they started producing yeah. in color. Chris, you are a vast storehouse of television <laughs> history. I love I, it. I'll give credit to station management. They give me enough time to go off and do research as opposed yeah, to Yeah, but you've got the kind of interest strength. and mind that likes to absorb it. It makes so it fun. your mom is here for 13 years. Uh-huh. 13, was that a long time back then for a woman? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, she, With kids? She, yeah, she she quit in her late 40s, and I think she would have been look, living or you know working further than that. But somehow that was considered getting up there, which is kind of strange. Yeah. <laughs> but um, she enjoyed her job, and she did a number of other things for the station that a uh, lot of public relations. She would go do ribbon cuttings, uh, be in parades, um, and actually, let's see, she did. She would would be the host along with one of the the men from Channel Eight, uh, one of the newsmen, for the five hundred festival parades. Richard and, Hickox. Yeah, it was Richard Hickox. And that was, that was always fun because I think we, we, they'd sit up on top of the Riddick building and my sister and I were little kids and we would have fun up there watching the parade. And this is at 1440 North Meridian. So a great yeah. look into history where yeah. nowadays the parade stays closer to downtown. But back then it, it does. Would've, it would've yeah, but it came right Meridian. down Meridian. Yeah. Did it go to the track, do you think, on 16th? Or? I can't remember that. I don't know if they did. Because as a kid, that always miffed me. Why didn't they just go from the track to downtown? Like, uh-huh. connect the... I don't uh, yeah, I don't know at what point it was changed. I also don't know when the, when that literal festival was initiated, how long the 500 went before... Don't quote me on this, uh-huh. okay? Don't quote me. I'm going to look it up here on my computer. Uh, if we listen to the podcast, this will, this will be a thing, as our series. I'll have yeah. to stop and pause and look something up. But uh-huh. I think the first... 500 Festival Parade, which, which Wish TV aired. Right. We were the only station there. Yeah. I think it was 1961 or 62. Okay. And hopefully someone from the festival will contact me and tell me. Okay. But I think it was the early 60s. That was Because you know, your mother did 62 it. and 63. Okay. From what I can find. Okay. Those are the years that she did the parade. All righty. Do you know about yeah. the... the um, wives breakfast that she would host yes that was her idea i believe and she produced the whole thing i don't know do you know where it was was uh, held i don't some type of a ballroom i don't know it might have been uh, if there's a large facility at the athletic club or the or um yeah someplace like that but she organized the whole thing and and they invited the driver's wives i'm not sure what year that started 65 okay thank you and she would actually sing. This was, of course, televised. Oh. And she would, I think, walk between the tables singing. And um, so she, she, mother was a real Renaissance girl. I mean, even after she left television, she dabbled in so many things. Really? Yeah. Talk more about those after, after um, life after Wish TV. After that, she uh, did a number of commercials, some in Chicago, some around in other areas of the Midwest. Um, when she, when, uh, we moved to, uh, the Carmel area, she, we were uh, in a neighborhood called Jordan Woods, which, um, she realized there was no homeowners association, no street lights, no whatever. So she started it, became the president of it. Um, she dabbled in some business ventures. She took up calligraphy. Um, she was just amazing. She really was. Back to Wish TV, mm-hmm. one of her bigger specials she would do was this 30 hour. Um, was it a marathon? 30 hour, sorry, a 30 minute, uh-huh. 30 minute fair. Um, Kay oh, Field yes. at the fair. Right. Do you remember those? With with Jean Allison, yes. generally. And um, she would interview uh, prominent people at the fair and maybe some average, everyday people, average, everyday people that were um, out there enjoying things. That goes back to one of the earlier things that Wish Radio was known for was they would broadcast live from the fair every summer. Okay. And have musical acts. And, right. Um, right. Story times and things like that. Yeah. So it's kind of a full circle moment that your mom is there in 63 uh-huh. doing right. a half hour special from the fair. Sure. So she did a number of other promotional type things and on location things uh, with Wish TV. Do you think she ever had an issue being in such a male dominated Never field. indicated that. Okay. No. So. Out, anyway. Did she ever have to? Was, did she ever have to keep up an appearance or look a certain way? I don't remember pressure being put on her for that. Okay. Um, she was a stylish gal to begin with and dressed very well. I have this. 
I have something from her. I can't find it right now where she mentions her wardrobe and it was black really? and white television. So she uh-huh. says most of what she had was black. Oh, or really? Very muted color. She didn't yeah. wear lots of colors. It was black and white television back uh-huh. then. So yeah. I think she said she had 10 to 15 blouses that she would rotate between. This is interesting that you know this stuff. <laughs> well, I remember she really enjoyed wearing cute little neck scarves, um, which was were big uh, some time ago. But heck, I still wear them sometimes. <laughs> and your mother didn't have a meteorology degree. No. But did the weather no. every day. That's right. I said, well, trans- five days a week. Or five days a week. Yeah. Right. How did that translate at home? Uh, would she wake up and go, hey, by the way, put your oh, coat on? Or- uh, well, she, yeah, she would know a lot about it. I remember when a big storm would come, she uh, she had trouble getting to the studio. So I, she had some, I don't know if it was somebody from Wish or a police escort that came out to our house wow. to get her, to get her there. So wow. that, that was fun. That's but, amazing. Yeah. Did Did you feel like you had a celebrity mother growing up? She seemed normal to me, but but you know other people knew she was a celebrity. And um, I remember at at Arlington High School, I was uh, I don't know if you know the name Bill Crawford. You probably yes. do. He was uh, the weatherman at um, Channel Six. I think it was Six, yeah. At the same time that Mother was the weather girl at at eight, and Bill and I were in the same class at at uh, Arlington High School. And um, someone came to take a publicity photo of the two of us at a weather map. Nice. So that was fun. Yeah. Your mother's last day at Wish TV was April 27th, 1967. Was it? Do you remember when, did she tell you ahead of time, I'm leaving the station? No, no. I was in college. And um, I tell you, it timed itself really well because I hadn't realized that the 27th of April in 67, because the 28th of April. You're going to scoop me. Okay, I was really go shocked at this. Go no, ahead you go it. ahead. You ask me. So just a day later, a couple yes. days later. <laughs> I never realized that. Yeah. Kit, you win Miss Indiana. Well, it was actually Miss IU. Or Miss IU, yeah. sorry. Miss IU. Yes. The, and the day after your mother. I know. And I didn't life. realize that she that she was leaving. I was busy at college and she hadn't mentioned it. How'd you find but, out? Um, probably when I, when I got home on breaks from college. No. Uh, probably, or she may have called me. She probably did. But anyway, that freed her up. The Lord has a way of doing things in a timely manner. Um, freed her up to be, um, because uh, eventually, not that year, but the following year, I became Miss Indiana. And she uh, went along with me. You know, she was my chaperone and was very helpful with my wardrobe. And um, she was a peach. And she would not have had that time. So the Lord knew what he was doing. Do you think she missed yeah. it at all? Did you ever have... You know, I'm not, I don't know that she did. She never mentioned that because she had so many interests. I think she just picked up something else and kind of ran with it. She does commercials right after, so... Yes, she's still she kind commercials of right after, uh-huh. So let's transition to you now because it's a great transition. The next day, you become Miss IU <laughs> and you go on to be Miss Indiana. Mm-hmm. Then you compete in the 19... 19- 69. A, well, it was in 68 for the title of 69. 69. Mm-hmm. Miss America. Yeah. Fourth uh-huh. runner up. Oh, well, thanks. You've done your homework. I've never met a runner up for Miss America that well, I know of. I tell you what, I used to watch the pageant when I was maybe 10 years old. Never in my wildest dreams dr- being in it. But when I was at IU, my sorority said, We want to put some different people up for Miss IU. And the first year, I turned them down. And the next year, I said, all right, I'll try it because talent's involved and I can sing. So I think that took me a long way. But I was surprised when I won. Why do you think you play so high in Miss America? Well, probably my singing voice, I I guess, and possibly my interview. I I, I don't know for sure, but I, you know, was was delighted and I was very comfortable there. And um, so it worked out well. At the Miss Indiana competition and for Miss America, you sang, Why Was I Born? Yeah, Miss America was, uh, Miss, uh, Miss Indiana was Where Are You, an old okay. Helen Morgan song, kind of a torchy old song. And I knew at, in um, in Atlantic City, uh, which in hindsight was not a big deal, Ed McMahon was one of the judges. And I knew that the gal whose rendition I had gotten, uh, Marilyn May was her okay. name. She still sings. She's nice like 95, but she's wonderful. Um I knew that he had had that that Johnny and Ed had had her on the show frequently, and I thought 
maybe I shouldn't be singing one of her songs, you know, her arrangement, because that that song changed keys halfway through, which was very interesting. Yes. But um, so uh, the, the one of the gals at, at the pageant, one of the, the director's wife said, I've got another old song along those lines called Why Was I Born? So I learned that and, and did that. Because Judy Garland does it. Ella Fitzgerald does it. Really? It's quite a different few versions of it. Really? Barbara Streisand does it. I had no idea yes. that they did Why Was I Born. Yes. I yeah. spent a couple of days listening to the Judy Garland version because I thought that was the one you would have picked. But. Well, that's amazing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So a, a, a fine musician from uh, IU at the time, Al Cobine, made the arrangement for me. Okay. And nice. so yeah. You mentioned there were um Vietnam protests outside of your outside of the venue on the boardwalk, right? Oh yeah. In, there were. The there were and women or men or whomever I probably women burning bras and I mean wow. this was nineteen sixty eight. And draft cards. And draft cards. Wow. Yeah. Crazy Vietnam. Did that era. impact the ceremony at all? Not or? really. I'm trying I have a vague recollection of someone in the audience one night calling out I mean, a protest, but it didn't really interrupt it. So yeah. And then a few years later, uh-huh. you yourself come to Wish TV. <laughs> How did that happen? Well, there, there's something similar with it. I told you earlier that, that Mumsy called Channel 6 years ago, and she said, do you need a singer? And they, <laughs> and they said, well, okay. So she went in, and then she that's when she did Harmony Hotel. So um, anyway, I had a two-year-old child back in the mid-'70s, and I wanted to go back to work. So what I did was um, I called Dellen Oldsmobile because Dellen, I don't know if it's specifically Dellen, but Oldsmobile Corporation had given me as Miss Indiana a car to drive every 3,000 miles, and then they'd use it as a demo. So Must I, be nice. I, yeah, it was fun. So I called that dealership, and I said, um, I, I used to be Miss Indiana, and you used to give me cars, you know, and would you like me to do your commercials? And whomever I was speaking with said, well, our our um, our owner likes to do the commercials, but here's the name of our ad agency. So I called the ad agency and I said, "Say, do you need a, a female to do a commercial for you?" And you know, sometimes you have to make contacts. Other times, people come to you. But um, he said, "Well, yes, I have something called McKelvey Kell, which I think was a carpet cleaner. I'm not a carpet cleaning service." And so I did those commercials, and someone at Channel 8 saw me, and they said, would you like to come? And uh, I don't even know that I auditioned. I think I just came in and talked to them, and and um, yeah, we did the, the show Dialing for Dollars. Which, did they know you yeah. were Kay Field's daughter at the I time? I think so. They probably okay. did. Probably did, yeah. Let's talk about Dialing for Dollars. You showed okay. me this great photo. Yeah. Uh, how did that show work? Oh, it was fun. It was fun. We'd have a movie, and we'd have breaks in the movies. I'd have a wheel I would spin, and I'd reach in a bin and pull out somebody's phone number. And the reason we had the wheel was to come to a certain number. I can't remember if it was an amount of money or just a, a number, uh, several numbers. And uh, the point was, are you watching the show? Can you tell me what that number is? Ah. And if they could, they would win. It was probably the amount of money they would win. That's right. probably what it was. Um so that that was kind of fun. How and, much money did you give away, do you think? Or what's the highest amount? You know what? I can't remember. I really can't. But it was a fun show to do because they gave me a lot of leeway. I would chit-chat. I would talk about arts and crafts that I make. Um, I would have, uh, one day I had some extra time, so I went into the newsroom and I, I said, hey, Jane, this was Jane Pauley, I said, come on in and chat with me so that, you know, I can fill some time. People would like to hear about the news. So she did that. And another time I was working, <laughs> this is a funny little story, I was working on a, a cruel stitchery project that had, I don't know, 27, 28 different, um, uh, what am I called, yarn colors. And so I was talking to the audience, you know, just kind of folksy-like, and I said, oh, I'm doing this new cruel stitchery project, and I'm trying to sort the colors out. Someone sent me, they, they figured out which one I did, was working on because of the number of, of um, uh, yarns. They sent me a cardboard with a sample of each one oh. and the number. I thought, how adorable, wow. how sweet. So, yeah, there was a lot of leeway to just chit-chat. And the first six months or more of the of the show were, were movies. And then Dinah Shore had a syndicated uh, show, and that we did that instead. And this was, how long were your segments in between the movies? Um, you know, I can't, I can't remember. Um, 
I don't know, probably long enough to call people okay. and to do some chit chat, but not not very long. Because I wanted to get back to the movie. And were you in Studio A or Studio B for this? Studio A for that. The large one. Yeah. The large one. Uh huh. And you're at the top. You're at the station at a time, very pivotal time. Uh huh. Mike Ahern is here. We talked right. about Bob McConnell was here. Right. Lee Giles is here. Right. Talk about some of those names. You mentioned Jane Polly. Yeah. Some of those names that were here when you were here. Yeah. They were. They were. In fact, and Dave Smith. He was the one that hired me. Um. And Mike Ahern overlapped with my mother just a little bit, okay. just a few years. And um, the use, the old Riddick building was from, I believe, 54 to 65. Yes. And then this building was, was made in 65. And But I do remember something funny. I think it was right about that year. Mother came home and told me. She said, you know, our... our um, uh, a film crew doesn't need to come back and develop film now because there's a new thing called videotape. So that that was fun. It made life easier for a lot of the, uh, you know, the reports. Wish TV was one of the first stations in America to have a uh, videotape. Were you? Yes, I didn't we know were that. One of the first in America to have that technology. Yeah. Well, and even fun. though we didn't use it right away, again, like I said, with color television, uh-huh. we had it and yeah. just kind of waited for the moment to catch up to us when we could That's use fun. it. What do you remember most about Mike Ahern? Well, I think one thing I remember before he was here, the Narrowing Ahern Report. When I was a kid growing up going to school, my dad would would wake up my sister and I, and she would, uh, um, my sister and me, I'm big on that I, me thing. (laughs) And she, uh, he would, I'd hear him downstairs listening to the Narrowing Ahern Report. On WIBC radio. Yes, yes. And then I guess Mike came here. He just seemed always very pleasant. I didn't have a lot of interaction with him. Um, the, most of the, the news people were in the newsroom. Um, but And, of course, Bob McConnell was the general manager. Uh, Lee Giles, did he take over um, uh, Dave Smith's job? I'm trying to – he was program director, and that's what – He was news director, program director, okay. a couple of different roles. Okay, because um, Dave Smith had been the, the program director. So maybe Lee, if they overlap, maybe Lee was over the news at okay. that point. But um, He starts here in 63, I believe. Okay. Lee, yes, Lee. Okay. Yeah. And Bob McConnell, this is, um, our station was founded and owned by C. Bruce McConnell. Bob mm-hmm. McConnell was his son. Right. Did you know at the time this was the founder of the station's son? You know, I remember Mother mentioning the name Bruce McConnell. So okay. I, you know, I, it's, it's vague in my mind. But no, I didn't realize that, I don't think. What was Bob like? He was friendly. He he was nice. Uh huh. Yeah, I didn't run into him too often. You know, he was up in his office. But um, yeah. Any fond memories or any memories at all of working for Corinthian? Um, I do remember the name Corinthian. That it was yeah, and it was a pleasant experience. In fact, before when I was still in college, there was some kind of a college showcase for singers. And they contacted me, and I was in that before. And then I think I mentioned to you that when I was 16, um, Mother was working at the station, of course, and they needed someone to help Santa Claus choose kids from the audience to come up and talk to him. So they hired me to do that for a little while. We we just found an old tape in the back uh, a couple of weeks ago. Of his college. We would, from 65 to 69, the station would invite college kids mm-hmm. X. It was like a talent show. It was a yeah. televised talent show right. to come to the station. So uh-huh. we have this great footage of these kids in the studio just singing songs and uh-huh. doing a talent. It's, it's great footage that we we'll have to put online. I now. love the stuff has been preserved. Yes. Yeah. It's huge here. Yeah. Why did you eventually leave Wish? Let's talk about that story. Well, actually, I had a two-year-old at the time and a um, husband at home. And weekends, it was, I, I, it, you know, to, to give up. Sunday to do the weather, um, which, you know, I guess I didn't actually mention all how that came to be, or did I? I don't think I did. We didn't mention that. Because you and I were chatting earlier. So you have a degree in meteorology, right? No. (laughs) Not at all. And so uh, Dave Smith, program director, called me in while I was doing Dialing for Dollars during that era, and he said, we would like someone to do the Sunday night weather. Would you like to do it? And uh, I said, "Eh, well, Okay. So um, I did it every Sunday night, but I remember um, the first Sunday night I did it, uh, I was, again, I go in the ladies' room, and I look in the mirror, and I think, what have I gotten myself into? I know nothing about weather. 
Um, and at that point, we had to decipher um, uh, teletype information. Reports. and Yeah, and, and put it up on the board with magnets and so forth. Um, and so I, I, did, I did the show that night, and apparently it was okay. But I remember coming in the next day and talking to one of the gals in the studio in the hallway, and I said, oh, I thought I was going to die last night. She said, thought you were going to die. <laughs> it made me laugh. It has to be so. I cannot. It's like if someone said, Chris, uh-huh. go do a 30 minute spot on algebra. I'm... Oh, I know. I know. No, I really didn't know. And again, when you do it once a week, it's like learning all over again. So, um, but that, I'm trying what to think. What years were those? Gee, it wasn't very long, actually. Okay. It was probably 75, maybe into 76, a little bit. Did you ever work with Stan Wood at all? Uh, he, he he tried to explain to me how to do this, and um, you know it it's, uh, it was a kind of a, a crash course. <laughs> Stan was a nice fellow, though. Talk more about Stan Wood. I hear it's very. Uh... I don't. You know, you may know more about him than I do. Okay. I know that he was uh, like the backup for for my mom when she would do the weather, and if she took a vacation or was off for some reason, he would would fill in, and then eventually he became the weatherman. Stan was weather in Indianapolis for a long time. Yeah, Very yeah, much so. he did it quite a while. Any of the names of the station back then that we haven't talked about? Mm, I'm trying to think. I can I, do all the research I want, but having yeah, people like you in the right. studio to help me with this is Well, I invaluable. certainly remember a lot of people in television in general from from uh, that era. Jim Gerard. Um, well, uh, uh, David Letterman was doing, first he did weather at 13, I think. Um, and oh, let me think, let me pick my brain here. Um, there were just a number of people actually. I worked with Jim Gerard doing Channel 20 fundraisers okay. for a while, and um, so yeah, it was, a, it was a good experience while I was down here. Oh, I know one other thing you might get a kick out of this was during uh, Watergate time. So I'd come in to do the movie in the afternoon, and the Watergate hearings would kind of interrupt it. So I'd sit in the lobby with my stitchery and I'll fill in time. And there was probably a, a, a TV out there watching that until suddenly it was over. And then I'd make a mad dash for the studio and we'd start the show. So you, you'd see, uh, who was the senator? Sam Irving. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I he, can't place. He, he had that uh, during the Watergate. Oh, Sam Irving. Yeah, of course, that during Southern, Watergate. That Southern yes. Drawl. Yes, he sure did. I remember those things went on and on. What was it like um, working at a TV station during Watergate? Wasn't really a problem. Wasn't really a problem at all. Was there you a know? lot of buzz? I don't recall that. Okay. Everybody kind of went on with their lives. I okay. mean, it was it was an interesting time. But And again, that was... When did the Vietnam War end? I should know that. I don't know. But yeah, uh, a lot going on back then. It was yeah. just a handful of years after the assassinations and the, the crazy 60s. and 68. Yeah. Big year to be yeah. in the new station. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, it was. What do you miss most about being at Wish? Um, well, the interaction with people. I had some nice friends down here. Yeah. But um, when I left, I started doing commercials in, in the Midwest. I was Chicago and uh, Dayton, Ohio. Just like your mom. Louisville. Yeah. Uh, yes. And, um, oh, gosh, Madison, Wisconsin, Northwest Fabrics, Um I did most of the things were on camera, and occasionally I do um, voiceovers. Um, so that actually kept me pretty busy. And at some point, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Shul's Mailbag, uh-huh. uh, Roven Roberts. Okay. He would he would come around and he called me and he said, "I'm doing a feature in the paper about where are they now." So he he uh, he said, "Let me interview you, and I'll do an article." So we had the interview. He did, posted the article, and <laughs> the next thing I knew, IU called me. Oh, where I had graduated with a, a degree in speech and theater, actually, and they said we would like you to do our um, basketball halftime shows. Whoa! I know. Wow. It's interesting. Sometimes you need to initiate your own work, and other times people will come to you if they well, like Channel Eight because they saw the commercial. So what year was this? Uh. Dude, dude, 80, I, th- I did it for three seasons there, uh, 84, 5, 5, 6, and 6, 7. You know, it starts, what, in the fall and goes to the spring. And it was actually a Bobby Knight years. And um, I my last year there was uh, when the last time they won the NCAA title. 84. 
80, uh, 86, 7. 80, okay, 86, 7. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, so that was fun. But when I was there, I kept asking him, could you get an on location in camera prompter? Because, you know, when you do the news, you've got now's Weather Girl. I just, it was, there was, I don't believe there was much on the prompter. But doing news, you have to read so much. So, and when I would do commercials, I could have things in the prompter. But I would go down to to Bloomington and do maybe three or four shows at once. And I had to memorize everything. So I kept saying, you know, you might consider an on-location, in-camera prompter. Finally, they agreed. And that year, the uh, president of the university decided he wanted to do the halftime oh, show. Oh, no. But I got him an in-camera <laughs> location prompter. <laughs> so, you know, that, that would have been, was very helpful. What did you do for the halftime show? What kind of... Um, they were primarily public relations. You okay. know, we'd, sometimes we'd come to the, to the Med Center in Indy. Uh, we'd go around campus in Bloomington featuring things that might be of interest or lure people or promote uh, the, the campus. So, um, yeah, that was fun. One of my kids told me recently that something popped up on YouTube of a brief portion of one of the shows way back then. But you nice. can find anything on YouTube. Yeah, well, so. as a historian, it's one of my best resources. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, let's wrap it up here and, and finish off with your mom. You, uh -huh. you lost her in 2014. Yes. And she was how old? Uh, just on the verge of uh, 94. That's a life well yeah. lived. They hit it. My dad lived to 100. Wow. Yeah. So, um, yeah, she she was, I tell you, if you talked with her on the phone, you'd think she was maybe 40 mm -hmm. because she was very, very with it and, um, you know, uh, astute. Um, but she had a number of health issues that, you know, at 94, we catch up with you. So, but it was a joy to have her around so much. And eventually we lived in the same neighborhood. Oh. So I got to see her a lot, go up and have tea with my mom and dad in the afternoon. Besides so, Wish TV, what do you think her legacy is? Oh, my goodness. Um, I think she would probably like people to appreciate the person she was, the well-rounded person and her faith. Um, I, I think that would mean a lot to her. I mean, I know she enjoyed her her uh, professional life and uh, her celebrity, um, but I think there are other things that were even more important, and her being a mother, good wife and mother. Very good. Well, Kit Kruger, on behalf of all of us here, we thank you and your mother for being well, a part you. of Wishtery. Well, you're, you're very, very kind to have asked me to come down. It's been fun to go down uh, memory lane and look at all the the old pictures. I have a treasure trove of them from my mother that we found in her house, and uh, it's just it's been a joy. So thank you. And you gave me a wonderful tour of Wish, and it's changed a lot since I was here in the mid '70s. Thank you. But it's been fun. So thank you, Chris. This is our story, our wish story. Local then, now, and always. Wish TV. You can find more podcasts from Wish TV on the All Indiana Podcast Network at allindianapodcastnetwork.com.